I'm Aubrey, and last summer I bought a pirate ship. She's a 1977 Formosa, 51 feet and a classic beauty. Now that she's mine, her days of sitting in dry dock are over. Refitting a classic sailboat takes hard work and cash, and some would say lots of it. So we left the Pacific Northwest and completed a successful restoration of a 1996 Hunter. We sold the boat and hightailed it back to the Pacific Northwest to resurrect the 1977 Formosa 51. I'm guessing there are some of you that are wondering how in the world did I end up on a pirate ship from a little pink boat to a 51 Formosa? Well, in the spirit of big changes, I'm going to tell you a little story. But first, let's find out what's happening over on the Formosa. The rigging is on its way. And the plan is to build this house on a solid foundation. And when I say house, I mean the rigging. The rigging is brand new from Selden and we are ordering new chain plates so that we are starting from the ground up with a really solid system. So first, we have to remove the old chain plates which have not been removed since the birth of the boat. So let's head on deck and let's see what's going on and let's pull some chain plates. Hopefully we can get them manufactured in time for the rigging to arrive and it can just go up and we sail away. <laughs> Wish us luck, let's do this. Handy dandy ladder. Sure. Okay. The chain plates aren't giving up as easily as I'd hoped. So while Searle struggles with that, I'm going to tell you how it all began. So when I was about 28, I decided to pack up my kids and move to Austin, Texas. I'm a photographer and I owned a studio in California and I was just ready for a change. I was single and just ready for a fresh start. Things were going great. We had a cute little house and we're really enjoying it. After a few months of being in Austin, I met a guy. What is that, Blake? That's my house. You would be the only person Hooters! To Hooters! Find, it's Hooters! Be the only person to find a little baby owl that had fallen out of its nest. What have I and you would down? be, you would be the, the person that I would what want to find. And he was really great. He loved the kids and he was adventurous and he had this big plan and idea and dream. I'm retired army and I've retired from the law enforcement security type of business that I've sold and I just wanted to go sail away, so I had to find a woman that was crazy enough to do it. Yeah, original <laughs> gangster uh, lizard catcher. Um, I am kind of an outdoors girl. Um, I love to catch things. Uh, I was born and raised in the country, um, and then I moved to LA, and then I moved to Texas, thinking this would be the country, and it's more like LA. So um, now we're just kind of meshing our lives together and, and seeing where it goes. So he wanted to do Bahamas Caribbean in this powerboat that he had. He had a 33, not big, it's like an overnight weekend kind of cruiser. He took me out on it on, um, on Lake Travis in Austin with the kids and we loved it. We had so much fun. We, we spent every weekend out there and he would talk to me about you know, this adventure that he had planned for someday. And so at the time the kids were in school and I said, well, hey, why not? Let's do it. Now back to the most dreaded job on the to-do list. Poodle support. Hello, poodle support. Okay, there's a new development. We're beefing up the chain plates. We had originally decided to go with uh, titanium, but titanium, although it is stronger in some ways, it's also brittle. Decided after speaking to the rigger <laughs> to go with a beefed up stainless steel. Come here, buddy. 
what that's gonna mean is just a thicker piece of stainless. So this has lasted over 50 years and I think a thicker piece will last us another 50. So I'm pretty happy with that. The idea that these oh, chain plates were going to slip out with a few loosened bolts was a hopeful fantasy. We are the entertainment in the yard today. Woo! All right. Was it twisted? It's not mutilated. Oh my gosh. Easy on my teak there, handsome. Ah. One down, nine more to go. Woo wee! All right. Okay, we have pulled apart everything. Socket over that one. This one is out. That center one is slipping. Um, so this is a chain plate we have not yet removed. Not yet. Okay. Okay, I think that's good. The new rigging has much larger wire than the original wire. And I know we're making the right decision in replacing these. I'd like to see this old girl make 100 years old. This is a step in the right direction. Ta-da! So, we are doing the act two chain plates. I should probably pay attention. <laughs> and these ones are gonna be a little bit more tricky getting out. And that is because there's a little waggle in them. So what we're going to do, which pains my heart so deeply, is that we're going to cut the teak rub rail. What we're going to do is cut here and here, and we'll round it so that the chain plate can then gonna come out over this beautiful teak lip here. So I'm going to cry a little tear for my teak and I'm going to be a little bit excited because we're that much closer to getting out there on the water and tally-ho ginger nut. Let's do this. While Searle and I look for the perfect tool to remove my beautiful teak, I'm going to take you back to 2015. So I pulled the kids out of school and decided to homeschool them and travel. I knew absolutely nothing. The first day that uh, we moved aboard was the first day I'd been on a boat in the ocean. It was insane. So the Great Loop is uh, this intercoastal waterway that goes around a lot of the United States and to see the U.S. that way was really really cool. Oh my gosh we're gonna have little oh, tuna bites and aioli sauce. How many catfish did you catch tonight? Um like 14. I think you got eight. Oh, 14. Well, you've got at least 30 since we've been here. It wasn't the easiest thing in the world. We grounded the boat, I don't know how many times. He had zero experience, um, really, other than the lake on a boat. So we were just, it was a blind leading the blind. And it was some of the coolest adventures that the kids and I have had. And it was amazing. So Rob had this idea that we'd go to the Bahamas and uh, we'd look for treasure. He was a huge history buff and the idea of living on a boat and searching for treasure was, I know it sounds crazy, but it just sounded so fun. So we were on the powerboat for about a year. and We lived in Florida. We were just kind of getting used to everything and getting in the groove. We're almost there. Yeah, what do you guys see? trip so far? Love it. Love it. And one day it kind of hit me. Like, unless you are really wealthy, you can't really travel the world on a powerboat. You know, you only have a certain amount of range on a 33-foot cruiser yacht. I started to see these sailboats in the slips and out on the water, and it got me thinking. I was like, you can, I mean, really go wherever you want. You don't need fuel. So I talked to Rob and he said, well, let's, let's get a sailboat. And so we did. Sailing in the rain, baby. Yeah. It's not so scary anymore. It's 
say that now, but knock on wood. We got the jib out and we're motor sailing, going to 7.5 knots and I'm trying to figure out how to hold my heading. It's kind of hard. Still at one. So neither Rob or I had ever sailed. I mean, I think I just said I had never been on the ocean uh, on a boat before. I mean, I'd stood on the shore, I thought it was beautiful, but I certainly wasn't any kind of sailor, and neither was Rob. Thinking you had a bad day is what a bad day looks like on the ocean. Could be worse. Could be worse, much worse. So we looked into a way to finance a boat. So we found this uh, Maritime Institute that would do this charter agreement and you give them a down payment of a third. And over the course of two to three years, you pay another third um, in monthly increments. Then at the end of the term, you pay the last third. So that was the deal. So it was a way for us to afford a sailboat. So we got a 405 Beneteau. It was beautiful. So we went up to Maine to pick this boat up and sail it down to Florida, where we would then sell the 33 cruiser's yacht and become sailors. Well, we did some miscalculation with the tide and the Eldridge, and then we did some sleeping in, and then this happened. We had never sailed, and the never being on a boat, a power boat with a huge engine in the ICW was a whole different kettle of fish than going out in the ocean on a sailboat. My kids went to my mom's where we were gonna do this trip that was going to take us a few weeks, and we were gonna head down and get to Florida. We started heading down, and um, I started to notice some things that were uh, abnormal with Rob. I'm glad you care about me. In hindsight, I should have seen things weren't quite right with Rob. What I didn't know was that he was on medication for a mental illness. And somewhere between Maine and Florida, he stopped taking them. And the worst happened. The relationship ended in a way I could have never imagined. And sadly, Rob succumbed to his mental illness later on, and he took his own life. But not before he created a few hurdles for me, which in the end made me better. Rob's illness came to a head, and he became violent. The truth is, he almost killed me. What I didn't realize was that, um, unfortunately, Rob had a uh, mental illness, and I knew he struggled with depression, and I knew he had PTSD, but I had no idea. He, uh, oh, this is such a hard story to talk about. While I gather my thoughts, let's head back over to the Formosa and see if we're making any progress on the app chain plates. What didn't I do You today? better put that back where you found it. Okay. Definitely that way. You're gonna have to pass me that. I'm gonna tell the people what the dynam is. All right, my darlings, the chain plate lives behind there. So we're going to make an access panel. Nothing pains me more than cutting through teeth. A small plank will cost you over $100, and that's if you can find it. This fact is part of the reason I'm such an advocate for restoring these leaky tikis. There's our chain plate. Now we got a fancy schmancy access hole. And we're gonna make a plate that's teak to go over it like that. There are only so many left. Okay, <laughs> now with a little fighting, with the boat of course, yeah. We got the final nut, which equals a final chain plate out of the boat. And I am super excited. This is one step closer to getting in the water and getting out of here. 
So I did have to cut some tiny holes in my beautiful teak, but we're gonna make some plates to cover it up, access panels. So it's better now. Now we can access the back of our chain plates if there's issues and they're serviceable. So congratulations us. So the chain plates are out. High five. Woohoo! Woo! And the rigger is coming over right now to pick them up and take them over to the machine shop. Yo, you at the gate? <laughs> okay, I am on my way. Happy days. <laughs> Cheers, bye. All right, let's go do this. It's now 2016, and I had some choices to make. Hard ones. For as much as I loved Rob, the safety of my children was more important. I am on the sailboat now by myself with my dog and bird and I'm like, holy hell, I don't know how to sail. Now I'm sitting there just wondering like, how in the hell am I going to move this boat? Like, what am I going to do? Practicing sailing slow with the motor on because I need a new alternator and a new starter and a new alternator belt. So I get one of my girlfriends, she's 20 three maybe and she had just gotten her captain's license and she was working on tall ships and I was like listen I need some help let's move this boat so um, I didn't move the boat far but uh, I started to get some confidence um, and during that time uh, Rob was still in treatment and you know figuring out everything that was going on with him and I was supportive of that but um, at the same time, like I had fallen in love with this lifestyle and I wasn't ready to give it up. The challenges that I faced scrambling to learn the lines were some of the most humbling teaching moments life has thrown at me. And it was at this point, I leaned into the challenge of doing the harder thing. So there was this moment where I was like, okay, you're either gonna go back and find an apartment and you know work at the grocery store or Starbucks or you know try to start a studio again or whatever you're gonna do and just go back to what it was before and I just wasn't willing to give up because of one bad thing that happened so I'm like you know what I'm gonna teach myself to sail so I got down to Block Island Rob had called the charter company and told them that I wasn't a qualified captain and that I wasn't fit to um, sail the boat, which wasn't really untrue at the point at that point, but it was kind of a, a mean thing to do. So the Maritime Institute came and repossessed my boat. Hot rum and cider. It's still hot. No, cold rum and cider. Aww. Cold cider. Cold toddy. <laughs> cold toddy. There goes my boat. My boat is gone. Rob called the charter company and said he was no longer on the boat. And so somehow they decided to take it and uh, had to move off of it in two and a half hours. Yeah. There's a lot of story between the teary-eyed girl you see and the one you know now today. But let's get back to work a bit before I tell you the rest. Behind us, and um, Searle's worried about Atlas. Ooh, there they are. The man, the myth, the legend. Uh, it's mostly myth. <laughs> All right, we got some chain plates here. Yeah, now we have to show you what we did to our rub rail. Uh-oh. <laughs> Do I want to know? <laughs> the boat was blue at one time, it looks. Yes. I blue and white. It. I think we're just going to do like a... Just shave it. T yeah. Yeah, we're gonna yeah tr trim it down a little. I think that's that's the best solution. No, everything's function over form. No, not my here. World. Not here. <laughs> I give it two thumbs up. This is what I love about Ken. He's like, oh, it's going to be great. He reminds me. Great. It's just, reminds me of me. No one will even notice. In fact, people will like, oh, that looks so custom. Where'd you get your rub rail done? Right. It's so different than all the other ones. It's cool. What'd you do? We call that super custom. Yeah, super customized. <laughs> no, it'll look great. You won't even notice. Perfect. And yeah. other good. The curves. They're from not, side to side. They're or, not perfectly symmetrical. Yeah, so what I did, I took a multi-tool and I enlarged the holes uh, in the, the rail 
just a bit so I can get them out because one side would be tough, the other side was easy. And right. So they would be very different. And when I was pulling them up, as soon as I got like enough leverage, I would actually bend it out a little bit to, to give slide it up a little bit yeah. more. Very Asian fancy. <laughs> <laughs> that is cursed out. So what do you think I should do about those? Just keep those? So yeah, those specific those bolts. Went through yeah, this I would just yeah. I would just keep those. Ah. Or another way to do this is instead of this fancy bolt head, you can just simply cut like a piece of aluminum that's round at that angle. That's what we do in this ah. world. Or that this might have all been mill like milled out of one big thing. Uh, but anyway, anyways, yeah. So get all new bolts. That would be on my to-do list. These aft aft ones are the best. <laughs> so let's talk about what. So are we doing these little things here, or just a nice flat? Because this is gonna. Cost I was thinking a mermaid time. tails. I know just you. Do, <laughs> or a kraken. Or a kraken. Just yeah, just do eat. what's easiest and quickest for them to. Yeah, and it will be structurally stronger. Yeah. It's just. So now the race is on again to get these chain plates remade with a thicker material to support our new rigging, which should be here any day now. Winter is moving in on us once again, and we have to get this boat out of the yard before the season changes and we're stuck in the Pacific Northwest for the cold winter. And it was just a really, really difficult time for me. And because I was just trying to navigate what I should do next and how I should do it and what I should tell people and this whole, whole social media thing was really new to me and I was embarrassed and so long story short I took two seasons off of YouTube which I now have available here on Vimeo again because it was just painful and I didn't want to answer questions and I wasn't really sure how to process it so there was really no answers for people because I didn't know what they were yet I wasn't sure why and how and what and I I don't know all I knew is that I wasn't going to give up and that's it the story continues next time on sailing with Lone Star <laughs>